بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد completing the ninth point in شرح السنة by Imam Babahari رحمه الله تعالى where Imam Babahari said رحمه الله وعلم أن الخروج عن الطريق على وجهين he said that the leaving the straight path is in two different ways. فَهُوَ ضَالٌ مُضِلٌ شَيْطَانٌ مَرِيدٌ فِي هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ حَقِيقٌ عَلَى مَنْ عَرَفَهُ أَنْ يُحَذِّرَ النَّاسَ مِنْهُ وَيُبَيِّنْ لَهُمْ قِصَّتُهُ لَإِلَّا يَقَعَ فِي بِدْعَتِهِ أَهَدْ فَيَهْلَكْ So Imam Baba Hadi said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, in the ninth point, he said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Know that leaving the correct path occurs in two ways. Firstly, that a man strays from the correct path, intending nothing but good. So his error is not to be followed, since it leads to destruction. His error leads to destruction. Secondly, a man who deliberately opposes the truth and acts contrary to the Salaf, to the pious ones who came before him, he is astray leading others astray, a rebellious devil within the ummah. It is upon those who know of him to warn the people against him and to explain his condition to them so that no one falls into his innovation and is destroyed. So when people say that Salafis or what have you or Ahl Sunnah is mutashaddid, that they're very harsh and they're very, uh, and they speak about others, that this Statement requires analysis. It requires us going into the statement. Why? That we can't run to either extreme. Yes, there are people who go beyond the bounds and make tebdi of their brothers and sisters. There are those people who do it uh, without the right to do so. Maybe they don't have the knowledge. They uh, don't have the trustworthiness and all the other conditions for doing so. They, they shouldn't be involved in those affairs, but they involve themselves tremendously in those affairs. There are people like that, yes. And the, some of those people have a resemblance closer to the Khawarij who make takfir to the people without the right to do so, who make takfir to the people for the major sins. Only some people make tibdi of the people for their major sins, or they make tibdi <coughs> of the people for... Uh, for mistakes that they make, even if they are from Ahl Sunnah. So there are people who fall into this and are blameworthy. But then there are those who are following those principles that are laid by, down by the Salaf. If you say you love Imam Malik, Imam Malik was on this. If you say you love Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Abu Hanifa was upon this. If you say you love Imam uh, Shafi'i, Imam Shafi'i was upon this. If you say you love Imam Ahmed, Imam Ahmed was upon this. Because of their ihtimam, of the hadith, and criticizing those people who uh, were tr uh, not trustworthy, untrustworthy with regards to uh, their narrations and with regards to uh, being innovators and so forth. So the Salaf of this Ummah, and as we see, this is the statement of Imam Barbahari we just read, who again died in 329 Hijri. We are in 1435, I believe, now, or 1436 Hijri, 1435, I believe. And we are, what, 1,100 years away from this time, and he said this. This is what he said, that we should warn against Bid'a and, and, and people who... Their usul, their foundation is not from Ahl Sunnah, and they've departed from Ahl Sunnah. Then Sheikh Rabi bin Hadi al Madhali 
we'll quickly read some of his uh, fawaid with regards to this point and end it because the last lesson we tried to derive from these uh, from these principles that Imam Barbahari rahimahullah ta'ala has laid out for us and we spoke about uh, Dr. Uh, Yasser Qadi may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us in him we spoke about why he uh, it appears from his own statements and his own actions and his da'wah and his methodology why he fits more into the second category who Imam Baba Hadi said and this is a, a person who is arrogant or stubborn with regards to the truth and they differ with those people who came before them from the pious ones now can we say that we're more pious because we want to sit with Hamza Yusuf and we want to sit with the Rafida and we want to sit with these people. Are we more pious because we don't want to hurt people's feelings and we want to bring the Muslims together? No, the Salaf were more pious than us. And what did one of the A'immat al-Muttaqeen say? Amir al-Mu'mineen, Abi Hafs, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, what did he say when he, uh, when he heard about the Qadriya? He said, tell them that I am free from them. And a bariyun minhum. Wuhum bariyun minni. O kama qal. He said, Radiyallahu ta'ala anhu ajma'een. Radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. And may Allah have, uh, be pleased with all the sahaba. Radiyallahu ta'ala anhu ajma'een. What did Umar bin al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu say? And he, which one of us is pious like Umar? None of us. Which one of us has a better minhaj and methodology for dealing with the modern day problems and coming together with the Quran and Muslimin and coming with the Sufis and coming with the Qadris, Qadriya and getting together with anyone who has ta'thir in their aqidah from the, je, uh, from, uh, the Jahmiya and the, Ash, and the Sha'ida. Which one of us uh, knows better than Umar? Radiyallahu ta'anu. Not one of us. Not one of us can, can say we're more on the Sunnah. So go back to that. That's what we're, we're saying. Go back to that. And he said he was free from them. So this is the minhaj of the salaf. It's not to be stubborn with regards to the truth. And it's not to come up with a new methodology in da'wah, but it's to follow the haq as it was revealed in kitab Allah wa sunnah rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the faham of the salaf of this ummah. And may Allah bless us to be upon that. Ameen, ya rabbil alameen. <coughs> so Imam Baba Hari said, rahimahullah ta'ala, amma ahaduhuma fa rajul qad zalla an tariq wa la yurida illa al-khayr. And we just explained the statement that this is the, the one that who's made a mistake on the path. He wants good and he, he, he was unable to get it. So he made a mistake. And so we, we stay away from his, his, his mistake because his mistake is, is a mistake and his mistake will lead to destruction. However, we... Uh, we maintain his, his, his status. Why? Because he's from Ahl Sunnah. Sheikh Rabi said, Aqul, hadha raju aladhi halahu la yakhlu an yakun min Ahl Sunnati wa marid al-haq thumma ijtahada li yasal ila al-haq lakinnuhu lam yasal ila haqqi ma'al ijtihadihi wa badala wasahu bel akhtahu فَهَذَا يَعْفُوَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ بِفَضْلِهِ وَكَرَمِهِ So, Shaykh Rabi said, Hafidh Allah Ta'ala, he said that this person, this is the one who, uh, he, he still remains from, to be from Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And he wants the truth. But, then from his ijtihad, from his striving, his striving to attain the truth, truth, he uh, made a mistake, and he didn't he didn't attain it in this issue. And from his striving and his efforts, but rather he made a mistake. Then this one, Allah will pardon him out of his his generosity and his greatness and his mercy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows uh, his slaves from amongst the believers or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught his slaves from the from the believers وَقَدْ عَلَّمَ اللَّهُ عِبَادَهُ 
المؤمنين أن يقولوا ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا فقال الله قد فعلت كما في الحديث الصحيح so uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught his slave and this is applicable to the first the man in the first condition that we're still talking to from amongst the believers to say and this is in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah ayat 2 uh, Two, uh, 286 Allah wa ta'ala says Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina wa akhtatna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he taught he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us to say O oh our Lord do not hold us accountable for what we have forgotten or what we have or our mistakes you know that which we've done as a legitimate mistake we made a mistake. And as the Prophet ﷺ said, كُلُّ ابْنُ آدَمْ خَطَّ وَخَيْرَ الْخَطَّائِينَ تَوَابُونَ All the children of Adam, they make mistakes. And the best of those is those who repent. And then, in a hadith, uh, it is narrated in, it was narrated in a hadith in uh, the Takhriji, I'm, I'm not sure, it's, it's in the, uh, in some of the pre prior pages, in an authentic hadith of the Prophet والسلام, which in relation to this ayat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Qad fa'altu, that I have done that meaning I have pardoned my slaves for their mistakes and their uh, for the mistakes that they've made and for what they've done out of forgetfulness and there's a, had a hadith other than that to illustrate that. Then the Shaykh mentioned another hadith of the Prophet والسلام, which illustrates this for us. وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِذَا حَكَمَ الْحَاكَمْ فَاجْتَهِدَ ثُمَّ صَابَ فَلَهُ أَجْرَانِ وَإِذَا حَكَمَ وَإِذَا حَكَمَ فَاجْتَهِدَ ثُمَّ أَخْطَأُ فَلَهُ أَجْرٌ In this hadith of the Prophet والسلام, the Prophet said that if a hakam, if a judge, he strives in a judgment, uh, but he uh, and and he attains that judgment, meaning he gets the right answer. Answer. Then he gets two rewards. And if a judge or a scholar, someone who has has the right to be making these types of ijtihad, uh, strives to gain the truth any mistakes, makes a mistake, then he'll receive one reward. So this shows us again the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. That the one, you know, especially from the ulama, especially from the scholars of the fuqaha, and the ulama of sunnah, and hadith, and those people who have the right to strive in those, those issues, and, and, and the leaders from amongst the Muslims, whether they be in leaders in Muslim communities, and they don't, they are, they don't have necessarily the access to the knowledge, or there are some issues it requires for them to make some sort of ijtihad in. Then, if they did it with sincerity and they tried to make the appropriate preparations from 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 the uh, from their studies, from studies and so forth, and they make a mistake, then they'll see, receive one reward even though their mistake should not be followed if it becomes clear that it was a mistake. They'll still receive a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they'll be pardoned. And this is the point. Or if they forgot, we all forget. So, then the shaykh mentions with regards to this hadith, he said, He said that the person who made this uh, mistake will be pardoned in relation to his ijtihad. It has to do because he strove to get the truth. This is in relation, why? Because this individual strove to get the truth. They weren't an arrogant person. How many ulama of sunnah have made mistakes in the past? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah has written books about this. In Mijmur al-Fatawa he speaks about this. He said, what uh, means this is a paraphrase, and I wish I had the exact nuts with me because we recently went over this, and I, and, I, and and what means. So I'll just give us the uh, the malachas or the 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 summary or a paraphrase. 
where he said that, he said what means that basically we'd almost have no one to follow, or we would have no one to follow, no one's path if we were to just hold people accountable for their mistakes. And he was talking about the Salaf. Yes, the Salaf of this Ummah. No one in every single mas'ala. Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah himself, rahimahullah ta'ala, in every issue, did he, was he correct? Did he not make a mistake in an issue? So this is the point. That these people, the Salaf of this Ummah, and the Salaf, those who preceded us from the ulama and the ulama of today, from Ahlul Sunnah, that looking, why is someone not judged with being a mubtadi'ah if they fall, fall into bid'ah? This is the question. The same way this principle applies, as Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentions, why is a person not judged with kufr when they've fallen into an issue, when they fell into kufr? As he says, rahimahullah ta'ala, laysa kullu, laysa kullu ahadin yaqa'a fi kufr to kum kafir. Or kama, kama qal. Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah says that everyone who falls into disbelief, and this is talking about the major disbelief even, is not a disbeliever. And that's where the conditions of takfir and so forth come in. Likewise, these conditions that are applicable to uh, uh, tibdir, of declaring a person an innovator. So, as Imam Baba Hari is saying, and as Sheikh Rabi is, is affirming of, and, and, and reiterating what Sheikh uh, Imam Baba Hari is saying, <coughs> is that through, because this person their usul is from Ahl Sunnah. You know, that they're, 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 they're Salafi. They are uh, from Ahl Sunnah Tibul Jama'ah. They're from Ahl Hadith. They're from Ahl Athar. They follow the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But they made a mistake in an issue, or a couple of issues, that could have dealt with Aqidah and Minhaj. But they didn't do it out of desires. They weren't a person of desires. He did it, and if he had known the truth, and when he hears of the truth, he corrects himself. This is what distinguishes Ahl Haq min Ahl Batil, Ahl Sunnah min Ahl Bid'ah. Ahl Sunnah, they'll correct themselves. They won't remain on falsehood. That's a trait of them. And they'll be excused by Allah Azza wa Jal. The Sheikh says with regards to dealing with this individual and that we don't follow him in his, his mistake. But rather we make clear to the people that he has made a mistake there. While at the same time excusing him. Why? Because it, he, he, it was from his ijtihad. Because of he, he strove for the truth and he didn't. He, he didn't have tawfiq from Allah to gain the truth, and it wasn't based upon his desires. Then he mentions, وَأَمَّا الرَّجُلْ آخر الَّذِي يَعْلَمَ الْحَقِّ فَيُخَالِفُهُ وَيُسِرُّ عَلَى بَاطِلِ وَيُعَانِدْ فَلَا يَرْجَعْ عَنْ بَاطِلِهِ فَهَذَا كَمَا قَالَ الْمُؤَلَّفِ ضَالٌ مُذِلٌ وَشَيْطَانٌ مُرِيدٌ فِي هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ Then the Shaykh says, and as for the, the second case, the second individual, or the second type of person, the one who knows the truth and they disregard it or they go against it. And they continue to be on their falsehood. And they become arrogant and do not return from their falsehood. And I, I'm just trying to put this in modern day context. I believe this fits perfectly the issue of Yasir Qadi. And I don't mean to dwell on this issue. But the reason I mention this, and I don't mention this with other certain other individuals, because he, he's Talib al -Ain. he studied. And he was known for his studies, for being studious. Obviously, he's studious. And he also, that was in his Islamic studies, he did a master's in uh, Jamaslamiyah and completed it. Alhamdulillah. That's a, that's a fadl min Allah. And 
He sat with ulama ahl sunnah. And on top of that, then he also did his, his, his studies in a university like Yale, which takes juhud. And not everyone can even get in to those Ivy League prestigious schools. Those are accomplishments. He knows the truth. In fact, I have a copy of his, when I was in Medina, I bought a copy. This was many years ago, when I didn't really even know who he was. I bought a copy of his master's thesis. And unfortunately, I haven't really read it, but it's a very important issue. And the, the, the odd thing about it is it is about, it's making, it's clarifying, I believe uh, uh, the, the leader of the Jahmiyyah, his Aqidah, at refuting it based on the principles of Ahl Sunnah. So here, this is evidence to show that the man knows the truth. He knows. He's been through all kinds of controversy. And maybe people, their controversy around him drove him to it. But this is not our, 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 the issue now. The issue is when you know the truth, you have to follow it. You know that those are not the principles of Ahl Sunnah. No matter if you're in America or Chechnya or Dagestan or Saudi Arabia or Yemen, Nam, there takes fiqh and there takes hikmah in each of those places. There's a different fiqh and there's different principles and there's different ways of dealing with people. Nam, I'll agree with you on that. But at the same time, you don't throw away the principles of Ahl Sunnah. I don't say, I, I live in Seattle, Washington. We don't have a lot of uh, this and that and the other. We don't have a lot of Salafis there, this and this and this. So I'm going to sit with the, the, Ash, the Ashadis and make muhadarat. I don't do that. I've been invited to do some of those things too, but I didn't do that. Why? For that reason. That would be throwing away, because especially to the level of innovation that they have in al asmai wa sifat in their an and al haq they are they refuse to go away from that, and they're proud and they're arrogant and they call to that. So I, you can't really work with people like that. No, there really isn't any benefit in that, because then the rest of the community would say, well. They must all be on the truth and they must be all together and they work together and it's all good. You can't. It would be a great harm. The mafsida outweighs the maslaha. The harmfulness of that outweighs the good of that. So getting back to the issue at hand, the sheikh said, the second type of person, he's a person who knows the truth and he differs with it. And he continues on falsehood. And he's arrogant towards the truth uh, and, uh, upon returning away from his falsehood. And this is the one who the, the author said is misguided and misguides uh, a, an accursed shaitan in this ummah. And that is because al-hawa because he follows his desires. Qala ta'ala. And then he mentions the ayat in Surah Al-Qasas and I think we've already been through this. And forgive me if we've repeated this lecture. Allah says, And who is more misguided than the one who follows his desires instead of the guidance from Allah? Verily, Allah doesn't guide the people who are uh, transgressors or oppressors or wicked sinners. The Sheikh says, uh, making uh, commentary with regards to that, he said that this is because they differ with the path of the believers, Sabila Mu'minin. And Allah says, and whoever differs with the messenger after the truth has come to him and guidance, and he follows a path other than the believers, غَيْرَ سَبِيلَ mu'minin. then we will associate him, you know, with those he associated with. And he will be roasted in Jahannam. And what an evil destination. So then the Shaykh says, as the last ibarah there, he said, وَيَجِبُ أَنْ يَحْذَرَ النَّاسِ مِنْهُ وَمِنْ ضَلَالَاتِهِ خَشْيَةً أَنْ يَقَعُوا أَوْ بَعْدَهُمْ فِي ضَلَالَاتِهِ وَهَذَا مِنْ نَصْ لِلْإِسْلَامِ وَالْمُسْلِمِينَ وَمِنْ إِبْ 
ابعادهم عن الغش الغاشيين الغشاشين وخروج من كتام الحق so this is a very nice ibarah the sheikh said hafizullah ta'ala he said it's an obligation to warn against those people whose misguidance we fear that will be spread uh, amongst the people or amongst some of the people their mis their misguidance and their their dalalat and he said and this is from advice in islam and as we mentioned the hadith of the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam adina nasiha adina nasiha adina nasiha uh, as the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam the religion is sincere advice and then the companions alayhi allah ta'ala majma'in they asked uh, liman who, to who ya rasulullah and the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said uh, to lillahi wa li kitabihi wa li a'immati wa li rasulihi wa li a'immati the Prophet ﷺ said with regards to this advice, this sincere advice, he said it's to it's for Allah, meaning reading, practicing, studying his book, uh, no, studying the Quran and believing in Tawheed properly, Lillahi, Wili Kitabihi, and to his book. So believing in the, the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, practicing the Qur'an, reading and reciting the Qur'an and, and reflecting upon the Qur'an and its meaning and its tafsir. And to his messenger, by following the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah in minhaj, in methodology, in aqidah, in, in, in fiqh, in everything, in manners, in adab, all those things, that, that's a part of a nas li-rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and and then he said to the uh, to the leaders of the Muslims by advising them when they are making mistakes when they're not ruling by the sharia when they're going further away by not making takfir of them without the right to do so and without ahna ilm preceding you by hearing and obey the Muslim leader as the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Asami wa ta'alu marayu al-Muslim fi ma yuhibba wa kariha. Ma lam yu'minu bi ma'asiyyatin fi dha' umiru bi ma'asiyyatin fa la sam'a wa la ta'a. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Hearing and obeying the leader, Asami wa ta'ala marayu al-Muslim. Listen and obey the Muslim leader. And again, this is, uh, this is uh, uh, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said this in a, in, as a command. This is the, in the imperative form in Arabic. The Prophet ﷺ, So it shows also, it still is imperative in its form, even though it's not uh, uh, a verb, it's not in the form of the imperative or fi'l amr, but it still is uh, another form in the Arabic language for showing wujub. And an emr you feed the will do, or showing a, an emr, showing a command, even though it's not a verb. So this also shows that what? As we go back to those principles, al emr you feed the will do. So whenever we hear that there's a command from the kitab or the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it shows that that's an obligation unless there's a sarif, unless there's something else in the, uh, the text which show that it goes from being an obligation to something that's mustahab or to something that's mubah, or something that's makru, or muharram, or uh, like this. So the Prophet ﷺ said, hearing and obey the, the Muslim leader, in that which you love and that which you, you, you hate, as long as he doesn't command you to uh, be in disobedience to Allah. And if he commands you to disobedience to Allah, then there's no hearing and obeying in that command. So this is also how we give advice to the Muslim leader. And then the final part of that hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, and this was uh, where we, uh, was the shahid of what we were trying to, I think this was the main point of what we were trying to make, of even mentioning this hadith, is that the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, 
Ahimatul Muslimin wa Ammatihim. He said to the leaders of the Muslims and the general Muslim. So this is a way that you give advice, Adin al Nasiha, to the general Muslims is by warning against Ahl Bid'ah. Why? Is it because we want to make our status better? Is it because we want more uh, prestige and popularity between the people? Is it because we want to look like we're in the truth and we're on good? Or is it because, uh, uh, or is it Lillah? That's what you have to ask yourself when you warn against someone. It's not a fun thing, it's not a good thing in the heart to speak about another Muslim. In fact, even to speak about other people, even, except for, of course, out of anger and your desires, that's easy. But in fact, when we look at, because speaking about people, is it's not a, a fun and a nice affair. And, if, and go back to, we did a video, uh, I asked Sheikh Saeed, Allah Ta'ala, about this issue. So it's on the YouTube and you can find about, you know, that it's not a, a nice thing in the cell of... You know, it wasn't that they enjoyed speaking about people, but they did it, it was out of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen. And they did it with sincerity to Allah. Wa rasulihi, wa li kitabi, wa li a'imatul muslimin wa ammatihim. They did it out of sincerity. It was advice. It was advising the ummah from the evil that some people contained and how it can infect and affect the community. So this is why, this is the purpose. This is the purpose for speaking about individuals. It's to warn the people against their, their sharm, to keep it from spreading as a way of reprimanding them, re reprimanding them. Those are some of the reasons why we uh, warn against Ahl Bid'ah and warn against the mistakes of people. And may Allah bless us with ikhlas with the bad. And the Shaykh mentioned that this advice is due in order to keep far away from cheating, uh, being of those people who cheat and deceive the, the people, and to stay away from being of those people who withhold the truth. So if someone asks me about someone from Ahl Bid'ah, then I must make that clear. I must clarify that if I believe that person is an innovator and they're a harm, I need to clarify that. And that, that's what we, we must, must do. But make sure that you have knowledge and the ability to do so before you get into those issues. It's best to stay away from those issues as much as possible. Now you listen to the students of knowledge that you trust and you look at their evidence as well. It isn't just blind following uh, so-and-so from the UK, so-and-so from America, so-and-so from this place, so-and-so from this place, so-and-so from Indonesia said that so-and-so is bad. Well, Daniel, you have to have evidence for those things. And that's what we try to invite ourselves and others to go back to the evidence, go back to those principles. So we have to have those principles first so you can distinguish between truth and falsehood. You're going to see many differences. It's no doubt... You're, one day you'll hear someone being praised and the next day you'll hear them being cursed. And this is not going to stop. What we have to realize, and if you get this in your heart now, get firm and know for sure it's not going to stop. The fitna will increase as the Prophet ﷺ prophesied. ﷺ. So know that the fitna will increase. One day you hear something, a praise about a particular brother or someone you love, and they're known for being from Ahl Sunnah, and they maybe they're from Ahl Sunnah. The next day the people are speaking ill of him and cursing him and belittling him for a mistake. Or perhaps he may have went astray and left the tariq. This also happens, and that's the case of the two that we're talking about in this whole uh, chapter, this whole uh, point by Imam Baba Hari, is that the, the path is two, or the, the it goes to two different... Uh, Two different types of individuals. The one who makes legitimate effort and they made a mistake. Or they made some mistakes. But they're not arrogant towards the truth. They'll correct themselves. They'll go back. So should we run and race to belittle this person and attack this person? And they're known to be from Ahl Sunnah. But we don't like them. So we run and we instantly get a, a statement from one of the ulama or several of the ulama to belittle them and destroy their reputation. Is that the way? That's not the way. And then the other person is a person whose usul is not from Ahl Sunnah. They're not Aslan. Aslan, they're Ashari. Aslan, they're, uh, 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 you know, they're Minhaj is from the Minhaj of Akhwan al Muslimin. 
Aslan, they're from, uh, you know, they have some uh, major Tosawaf or something like this. And Aslan, they're, they're, they have some, they're Maturidiyya, or Maturidiyya, or they are some other Sufi Tariqa. This person is, uh, their honor is not maintained, but you still have to have just with justice with them. You can't talk about their race and their nationality and their hair and their this and this and then their family and this and this and this. No, but refute where they're, they're wrong in Minhaj, their methodology, their Aqidah, their issues that they're making their mistakes in. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas, with the anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.